Good morning, everyone. Um, this is some work I've just completed um, for my longest serving customer over in New Zealand, uh, Mark. And um, he uh, has sent me a big package and this was the first sort of lot that he wanted me to get done and then we'll do the rest in installments because all the rest, and there's quite a bit of it, is all cavalry for his uh, Strathclyde Welsh um, war band for Saga. So uh, lots of horses in my future uh, for painting. Um, yeah, so well, here's one in front of you, actually, a, uh, a horse uh, and rider. I think this is, um, this might be for his Irish. I'm not sure. I don't think it's for the Strathclyde, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong. So um, these are all footsore miniatures sculpted by Bill Thornhill, Hill, bleh, bleh, Bill Thornhill, who used to sculpt for footsore and no longer does. And now, far as I can see, he's freelance digital sculptor. Um, so when we'll ever see his work again in metal castings, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Which I've... You know, I'm a bit disappointed about, but, you know, that's, that's none of my business what he does. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, some of my favourite miniatures have been from him. Um, you notice even in my um, little icon for YouTube is one of his his um, all-time classic miniatures. Um, that I, It's one of my favourites. Um, yeah, really like his work. Um, but I'm not involved in the world of digital sculpting, don't have a printer, and it's just I prefer metal miniatures if I can. Um, yeah, I have painted um, 3D sculpted uh, figures for customers, perfectly happy to do that, and and some of them are actually quite nice, so, you know, and I'm sure there'll be more to paint in my future. Okay, so, now with this guy, now Mark, just a word about this. I, this, so you've got two points of connection with the back hooves uh, connected metal to metal to the base. From memory, I think that's the case. Yeah. Now there was a point of connection on this front hoof, but it was very, very dubious. And in fact, when I was pretty sure at this clean up stage, when I was filing and cleaning up, that this snapped away from its little metal lump of a tough thing that it was attached to. Super glued it back, but super glue is brittle stuff, and it just snapped off again. So anyway, um, it is padded out around there. You can see what I've done is um, create some heather, and I've just used um, torn off bits of clump foliage, Woodland Scenics clump foliage, and glued that, super glued that in place, Various places on the base. So I'm going to tilt that forward for you a bit. Without casting a huge shadow. So yeah, there's quite a bit on of that on the base. And there's a couple of stones I've glued on there, blended in with the sand and things like that, just to make it as it's a larger base, you can do a bit more with it. So yeah, I've got the heather and the, the heather colours are just, just two different sort of shades of purple acrylic paint daubed on there on the woodland woodland scenics clump foliage and I'm quite pleased with it and um yeah and pleased with how the horse turned out this was if you've watched my previous video on um painting with tube acrylics painting horses with tube acrylics this was done with that method um and it's since had a matte varnish so it takes away some of the sheen that you can get with um which you know I don't mind but you, you can get a bit of a sheen with um, tube acrylics. It's sort of a nice satin finish, probably almost realistic for horses, really. So, included a bit of patterning on him. He's got some stripes on his his tunic and little sort of circles with dots on the saddle blanket and sort of band of trim. And um, yeah, sort of a. I think the colour I used for the uh, cloak is a 
Katie, AK's third gen um, Oxford blue, I think it is. So it's a quite a grayish blue. Grayish blue. Yeah. So I like him. I, I like how that turned out. It's quite striking. So that was him. And then Mark also sent um, another, I, I assume they're Anglo-Saxons, um, late Anglo-Saxon command base. Um, he said he didn't send the banner for the uh, banner pole on this occasion. I think he's going to do that once it gets back to him over in New Zealand. And um, that's the plan from what I understand. So that's cool. So um, he also said, and and I, I tend to agree with him, that you often see this figure is done, is shown in the pictures on the Futsal website is holding a shield with his sort of fist up raised like that. And Mark sort of said he preferred that the shield was sort of at his feet or on the ground or something like that. And I kind of agree. It's kind of a... be a more interesting compose for a commander to have it pumping his fist up like that <laughs> I don't know it makes a change from the usual pointing poses <laughs> that you get for commander figures so yeah the shield decals on all of these will be are from little big man studios and uh, always remember when you apply them give them a good couple of coats of varnish afterwards because the beggars do tend to shrink afterwise afterwards and as you've if you've done the right thing you've already uh, base coated your shields with white so that when you put the uh, transfers on the color shows through um, but what will happen if you do not varnish these they will shrink over time um, and then you can end up with this band of white around your shields that you then you've got to go and touch up there they are plenty of Male, <clears throat> I used a sort of diff a lot of different colours for the leathers. Some are done with inks, um, some are just painted. Scale 75 uh, for the medals. Okay, now back here, moving these forward, these are to finish off his... Um, He's Irish, or he's Norse Gales, or whatever, or maybe they do double duty. I'm not sure. That Mark's got some pretty significant armies, but um, it's just probably just finishing this one off, unless unless these are for something else, unless these guys are in with the Strathclyde as well. I, I have no idea. They're probably, I think they're just Irish, more Irish uh, warriors skirmishing with javelins so once again all the um shield decals are from little big men studios um and i go for all the shield rims um I do them in leather um it was pretty unlikely to, to for people to have shield rims in metal at this time um you're far more likely to see shield rims made of um a leather heavy leather to protect the edge of the shield um, metal was uh, expensive and far more want you know you'd more likely to want that for your weapons or your mail or something like that um, a shield was considered um, something that would have to be uh, it had a slight expendability to it um, that would need repairing or replacing you could you could keep the boss central boss and reuse it things like that so um but yeah they're nice patterns that um they have on them the swirls slightly celtic sort of irish celtic swirls and things so yeah go for i've gone for as usual for these guys sort of fairly simple colors nothing too bright nothing too intense in terms of color palette which i think i feel is appropriate these are sort of lower status warriors. You don't want bright. Um, unless you're doing them as a fantasy army. If you're doing them for historicals, you don't want really bright, super popping colours on um, these kind of rank and file characters. 
it um they just wouldn't have had that, those kind of clothes you would have had a lot of different colors because there are actually a lot of colors achievable um using natural dyes and methods um but you're like it like more likely to see the better colored garments and stronger colored garments on on more noble characters okay so that's them and then um just finishing it out there were two more um, anglo-saxon types i think they are unless one's a viking i don't know i'm not sure but these two guys um so he's got his quilted jacket on a coif and a helmet so probably a later anglo-saxon nice shield design again going for that leather rim or trim that you can blend in with the edges of the shield to hide where the um, transfer finishes um so yeah quite pleased with how that turned out that jacket and he's chap he's got a highly decorated sort of shield got a bit of a furry gillet thing going on there his leg bindings so yes used a lot of um the ak third gen paints on these actually i'm really impressed with them so far I keep, I keep wanting to use them because I, I just, yeah, finding them really good. Um, maybe down the line I'll even replace um, more of my Vallejo paints with them. Um, you know, they're on par. I don't know. I just, I just, I just really like them. I like the way they handle and uh, the way they go on. And there's a massive range of colours. And uh, yeah, very good. Okay, guys, um, that's it for the moment. I don't think I've got any other news for you. I think my next project is going back to do some more fantasy characters for my customer in Queensland. Um, and then that will, I think, we must be just nearly to the end of the box of goodies that he sent me. I think that's probably what I'll do next. So lots of individuals and um i'll have to check in with him about um color reference and any ideas he had for how he wants them to look but uh for now this is what i've got this is what it's uh gonna get packed up and winging its way to new zealand hopefully soon in the next um couple of days when i can get to a convenient uh, post office um but thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.